This is part 16 of the tutorials for building our target. In parts number um, 13 and 14, uh, we covered the script for my game manager. In 15, we covered the script attached to the bullet, which is uh, the trigger on key. And now we're going to go to the script attached to the game object called target, and that's the um, wait a second. Let's open it. And it's the script attached actually to the target viz, uh, the visual part, because we are hitting the visual part of the script, uh, called explode when hit. And let me open that script. And right now it's just an empty script. So again, this is not attached to the parent. The parent is pretty empty. It's attached to the cylinder itself. Um, important to remember because if we replace the cylinder, we have to make sure that we're attaching this script to whatever we replace it with. Uh, edit script, and right now it's just a shell of a script, has nothing in it. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go to our depository of code, which has everything in like rich text format. I'm double clicking on the Mac, it opens it with uh, text edit. On Windows, it's probably going to open it with, I don't know, um, any text editor, it doesn't matter, copy, select all, copy, select all, and copy. I mean, it's uh, control A and control C uh, on Windows. Here on the Mac, it's command A and command C. And I'm going back to Visual Studio and pasting, just making sure I don't have any unwanted first lines um, and it, that should take us to line 61. Um, as, as we did with all the other scripts, first thing I'm checking before anything else is that the name of the script explode when hit with capital letters on each one of the words matches exactly the name of the class in it and it does in this script there are two public game object fields because the idea is that this script is going to sense whether we hit the target or not and when we did we want to turn off the cylinder and instead turn on the explosion in order to do that we have to tell it who's playing the part of the visual who's playing the part of the explosion so as soon as we save that script if we go back to unity and we go back to that script, it now has two public fields, target explosion, target viz. And we're simply gonna drag um, the two appropriate uh, uh, game objects into those fields. I'm gonna tell it target viz is playing the part of target viz, and the explosion, which is right now still disabled, is going to play the part of the explosion. You see how this is so beneficial because later on I can get to say, well, I don't like this explosion. Let me bring another one and make it play the part of the explosion. Maybe I will want a splash instead of an explosion. All the script is going to do is turn on and off whoever I tell it is playing the part of this game object. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, now would be a good time to test it because if I play, let's see if I can hit the target. Yeah, missed. I'm going to do it again. Let's see if I can, because uh, the miss script is not working yet. Sure works. By the way, the sound is part of the explosion. We attach the sound to the explosion. Here it is. So when the explosion is enabled, so is the sound, it plays on awake. Great. Let's go to the script and see what else it says. Um, in this case, it's a unique situation where we're not using any of the start. I, you know, my habit is to, you know, even if I don't use them, is to keep them there, you know, empty, just so to remind me that I'm not using them. Same thing for update. We're not using start. We're not using update. All we're doing is one function here, that's the main function, which is void on collision 
enter. This is a predefined uh, event in um, Unity and in C Sharp that detects if something is colliding. Now, on collision enter means as soon as two things with at least one of them has a rigid body and both of them have colliders are touching each other. Then there's two parameters here. Collision is what it describes, what you know, what it's going to look for. Um, so sometimes it's not collisions, sometimes it's just overlapping and so on, or exiting, and a parameter name, which I simply uh, decided to call collision in lowercase. Okay? Uh, if I change that to, uh, let's say, um, my bullet, Notice how everywhere I said collision before is now reporting an error. So I could just say, this is just the name of the variable attached to the game object providing the collision. So if I just replace my bullet with what used to be called collision, all the reds disappear. Okay. I think it's going to be easier for us to read. Although I didn't have to do this, it's just saying collision, collision sometimes confuses people. So if the collision is made by a game object, which I refer to as my bullet, first of all, let's check if it's really a bullet. Check if it matches, if what just collided with this target is something with a tag bullet. I've, you should remember that if we go back, so what is it really checking, this script? It's checking to see if something that has the tag bullet collided with it. Who has the tag bullet? If we go to the bullet container, here's the tag bullet. And we created it about five uh, tutorials ago. Because this is not one object, it's going to be a ton of clones of it. Of it. So how are we going to know that they are bullets? Because they all carry the tag bullet. Going back to the script, so if the object that collided with the target has the tag bullet, by the way, the spelling is very important. I, When I created that tag, I made it in all lowercase. So here I have to do lowercase or the equality is not going to be true. Um, then if it is, let's see what's happening. This is really the, you know, the action. Target explosion set active true, activate explosion. And deactivate the visual part, which is, you know, the cylinder. Hide the, you know, the, the visual, visual part of the target, which is right now the, you know, the cylinder. Or anything that we replace it with. Then, not only do we want to hide that, we want to destroy the bullet's game object. Destroy the bullet, because when a missile hits the target, we want to destroy the missile. We also want to destroy the target, right? They both get destroyed. <coughs> but if we destroy it right away, what's going to happen is we're not going to see the explosion, right? The explosion is part of the target. Look, if I, let's see if I can do it quickly. Um, if it got destroyed right away, destroyed the parent of this object, look at what's going to happen. If I am able to hit the target, of course. If I destroy both the bullet and the target immediately, that's exactly what it'll do. I often say computers are so stupid that they will do exactly what you tell them to, not what you want them to. What we told it now is to destroy both target and um, and bullet, and so it did. So what I really want is for it to destroy the bullet, but wait a little while until we get to see the explosion. So I will take that line out and re-enable this. 
The function invoke is great for calling a function with a delay, saying, I want you to call this function, but wait a little bit. What function is it going to call? Destroy target container, which is the function outside right here waiting. When will it call it? Two and a half seconds later. Two and a half seconds are just enough time to see the explosion, to hear the sound, and so on. So it'll call the function to destroy the whole target container, but give it a delay to uh, experience, to see, and hear the explosion. And then it's going to destroy it. So the explosion has been activated. We get to see and hear it. And after two and a half seconds, it's going to call the function to destroy target container. And look at what it's going to do. Two things. First of all, destroy the parent of this object. Why the parent? Because we are calling it from target viz, but we want to destroy the whole target container. So it's it's its parent. It's going to destroy everything just, you know, it, as if it doesn't exist. Uh, if it doesn't exist anymore, then we want to tell the application data to make a new bullet and to make a new target. There are if statements in the game manager that check, oh, if someone told me that to make a new bullet, it's time to instantiate a new bullet and so on. But we're just telling the application data to change it from false to true. Just a quick reminder, if I go back to the game manager, one of the if statements here says, if application data make bullets true, we just found out how it gets to be true. Then it instantiates a bullet and so on. If make new target is true, instantiate. So it's two scripts talking to each other using application data. That is the common um, thing between them. So once the script is changed back to the way it was, now we can understand why when I hit a target, and again, hopefully I can hit one. I think so. It needs to save. I think I did not save it because it seems to still be. Yeah, now I saved it. Um, once I saved it to go back to the way it was. Hmm. I did not. Let's see if I'm actually even editing the right one. Call it. Yep, it is the right one. Explode when hit. So, oh, that's the one I forgot to save. Explode when hit. I thought I was saving trigger when key. So it, it was there. I just forgot to save the changes. So they were not applied yet. Now, finally, let's see if oh, this is one that's I'm not sure I'm going to hit that soon. And because our script for the wall is not there yet. I have to play again. Just so you can see, destroy target. This, and only now, if you looked here, only after two and a half seconds, the clone for the target was destroyed. Let's see if we could do it again. So notice when I play in the scene, it instantiates a bullet and a target. Let me actually keep playing until I get an easy target because I don't want to miss it. Yeah, that should be relatively easy. I hope I can hit it. Notice what happens here. The bullet will be, uh, just if I hit, destroyed immediately, but the target will take two and a half seconds. One, two, and a half. And then it instantiated a new bullet and a new target. Why did it take two and a half seconds? Because in the script, invoke the function that destroys and makes, you know, reports to application data to make a new bullet and make a new target. It delayed it by two and a half seconds. And we can play around with that. I mostly did it by the length of what I want to see. Um, if I made it shorter, it would just probably cut the sound and cut the visuals of the explosion 
prematurely. So uh, this does it for the tutorial about uh, explode when hit, uh, which leaves really, I believe, only one script to go over, which we will in the next part, which I believe is going to be 17. And that's the script attached to the wall, which is the script called catch miss script. It's a script that catches all the missed missiles. See you in the next part.